It has been a heck of a long day. I mean, you got to feel for the Alexandrians a little bit. This morning, effectively, they just had Crazy Rick to deal with. Now, massive herd is broken loose. Those that went out to uh, deal with it, most of them are gone. The wolves attacked, wiped out about half the town. And now they're surrounded by the other half of the herd. An army of walkers, 20 deep, surrounding the town. It's just waiting now. Waiting for Daryl, Abraham, and Sasha to get back. Hoping that Glenn and Nicholas are going to come back. Long wait. Long enough for people to think about what's coming. What their chances are. This is the wait time and what happens to the Alexandrians during it. It's The Walking Dead, Season 6, Episode 5. Now. All right, here is your spoiler warning. Listen any further, it's your own fault. So this week we, uh, got kind of a, a, a resting episode. I think the last two after this sort of intensity of the first three. And we're seeing the effects of what's happened to the Alexandrians and how they're dealing with kind of this intense change of their world. And the scene opens up, the episode opens up very nicely focusing on Deanna as she is sort of overlooking the carnage of the town. Uh, very slow, very post-traumatic look in her face. She's overwhelmed with the instances. And of course, she hears a voice calling out to open the gate, turns and sees the massive herd right outside the walls with Rick Grimes running through and making his way to the gate. Never count Rick out. He looked a little scared the last time we saw him in the RV, but that's just a passing thing with Rick. He is a survivor. Um, and it was a great scene of just seeing him bursting in front of the herd right into the town, closing the gates just in time. And the focus back on Deanna there, personally to me, reminds me a lot of the look that Nicholas had just before the end for him. She is on the edge. And this will be quite a little bit of a journey for her during this episode, kind of wandering in a post-traumatic, just haze, not really responding or, or seeing anything. And that's not very supportive for the residents of the town. They have looked for her for leadership and for guidance since the beginning of the apocalypse. And now she has effectively checked out. And Rick is the one, of course, who has stepped up to guide them, to let them know the walls are going to hold. Can you? And again, that's really what this episode deals with, is the aftermath of how people deal with basically the view of impending doom. This is really uh, how the group has lived for the past couple of years now, since the apocalypse began. Alexandrians have been protected from this, um, which is why Spencer later on really lays into Deanna, and, and understandably so. She's been trying to protect them and Spencer is now saying that that protection came at a cost, and the cost is they are unprepared. So when something does happen, um, they get kind of wiped out. If it wasn't for Rick and the group, uh, Alexandria would probably at this stage be no more. So there are a few important speeches that are given during the episode to kind of try and shock the residents of the town into uh, seeing the new reality. We have, we have Rick's first little speech to the group as Deanna stands there in kind of her haze um, about that the walls are going to hold, are they going to hold? The kind of introduction to this is going to be weight, you've got to be there for each other, you've got to remain strong. Um, for many of those that doesn't last very long. We have the raid into the pantry um, where the residents are basically saying, we're all gonna die, why do we stop stocking, you know, why are we, uh, uh, you know, dueling food out slowly, we just need it all, we wanna at least enjoy our last moments. Um, and that's where Spencer walks up, kind of surprising to me. Uh, and, and I think it's a good move for him, though, again, later on, the truth of it, it it's kind of hard to tell, but I think his, his initial impressions are really important. Stop 
this is not what we do. If we continue this, we can look back to this is the moment where everything changed, where everything fell apart. He's trying to rouse the people together to, to see, to not look into uh, the gaping maw of doom, but kind of understand that, that we're here for the long term. Very nice. And then of course, once they all leave, he kind of takes a little grouping to himself and there's, and there's a certain justification for it in that he's right. If everybody did it, if a large group did it and everybody knew, then it would fall apart. One person can get away with going in and sneaking and stealing a few things. Why not him? He stepped up and stopped the, 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 the run on the pantry. Why can't he get a little bit of rewards? Bit of the alcohol talking out, but kind of, still kind of laying into the ideas that it's, it's perception that matters. It's how the town, uh, the residents sort of see everything all together. Is there hope? Is there not hope? If people start crumbling, that's gonna crumble everyone else. So you've gotta sort of maintain a strong front even if that front is a bit simulated and, and less real. Uh, and then you have uh, Jesse's uh, speech to the town um, that they have to fight. If they don't fight, they die. This is the world. They have refused to see the world and it was by choice. Again, a nice poem for them. This is by choice that they refuse to see the world that it has changed. They've been protected and allowed to get away with that illusion. And that is now gone. They have to deal with what happened. Also, beautiful kill by Jesse. I mean, just seeing the, 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 the Walker, Betsy there, um, the ex-resident now, Walker, Betsy, clawing at the window and knowing that she had to take care of it, opens the door just a little bit to get the heads out, slides it right into the eye socket, and she drops down. No mess, no fuss, no over drama. Just a very smooth, cool, calm way of dealing with, yes, a horrible situation, but she is showing that she has the, the chutzpah, the wherewithal to survive and, and, and move forward inside of this apocalyptic nightmare. Yes, life can be overwhelming at times, but it should be noted that suicide is never the answer especially in the zombie apocalypse. If these episodes have demonstrated anything, either by Nicholas knocking Glenn into a horde of zombies after blowing his own brains out, or Betsy slicing her wrists and leaving a walker bomb for the citizens of Alexandria to discover, suicide is a doubly bad move in the zombie apocalypse. Don't do it. It's just bad form. And then we have Maggie's little adventure. Maggie, of course, trying to go after Glenn. They spent so much time on the way to uh, Terminus looking for each other. They swore they would never be apart again. So you can really feel how this is tearing her apart, especially knowing what we find out at the end, that she is pregnant. Uh, now, personally, I thought that they had said that before. They may have just alluded to it. It didn't surprise me as much. Um, Maybe just some of the storylines kind of conveyed that sort of idea for it. But, but either way, it's now confirmed that she is pregnant and that gives her a reason not to take that risk in a way that she gets to carry a part of Glenn with her. She has to sort of accept uh, where things are. So we still leave Glenn's fate out in the, in, the, in the ethers of what's going to happen. But I think a lot of this episode, especially with her journey, has been sort of prepping her and prepping us as the audience to kind of accept the fact that Glenn is probably gone. Yes, of course, he could still pop out. There could be some miracle move. Glenn's awesome. Uh, but I think there's been a lot of work here to kind of convey that, that, that feeling with us that we, that we as an audience have to accept the fact uh, that Glenn is, is no more and will, will not be joining the group. Uh, and, and actually, I've, I've got one other little question. The, uh, the fight with the two zombies in the sewers, nicely well done, very cool. Uh, but after the whole fight, did they go down an entirely separate tunnel? Uh, they came up, they removed the ladder, they released the two walkers, and it looked like once they were done, they went an entirely different way. So why did they move the ladder? Again, I know it's nitpicking, but those are small little things. You, you can clearly see that the tunnel that they went in has has no obstructions, have no dirt, have no mud, no sludge, nothing like that, was a nice clean entrance. Just, 
I don't, I, I don't know why they did that. It's just kind of silly. It's like, hey, we need an action sequence, and now we're gonna go continue on this way. And then, of course, at the end, we have the little encounter with Rick and 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 Jesse, and they're kind of fall into each other's arms. Um, now, it's been weeks, it's been a month since, uh, over a month since the, the series started, and of course their last encounter really was, was last season. Uh, but time-wise, I think it's been less than a week since Rick shot her husband in the face, uh, trying to, to, to play back with the, the images. Right, I know his face is healed, maybe it's a little longer than a week, but it's not that long. Um, so, kind of falling into each other's arms seems, I don't know, could seem a little rushed, but obviously Porch Dick was a dick. Um, uh, Jesse's husband, uh, sorry, if you guys watch Talking Dead, uh, that was the referral back to him. So, so that is kind of, I can't even remember his name, that's just his identity, how it's locked in my head. Um, but obviously their relationship was not that great. He's an abusive husband, so... Uh, that was sort of why she was, I think, drawn to Rick in a way uh, uh, in the beginning. Uh, now they've got their moment, which is nice, but it's dark outside. They're in the open, well-lit garage. It's like a picture box that they're framed in. They're just waiting for Deanna or one of the boys to just walk by and see that and create a whole new level of drama. So maybe, maybe those moments should be... Sorry, I kicked the camera. Uh, maybe those moments should be uh, a little more private in the future and not like staged on a giant lit stage for everyone to see. But that's just me. Anyway, so next week, next week we get to see what has happened with Daryl and Abraham and Sasha. Uh, they should have been back by now. Uh, at one point they were five miles away with still plenty of daylight. Average walking speed's about three miles per hour, so they could take about seven hours or so. I mean, I guess it would probably would be night. You got walkers that are moving a little slower, maybe one or two miles an hour. That might take a whole day to get 20 miles, but they should be back by now. Did something happen? Is it just a, a, a timing situation? Did they have to take an extra long uh, route to get around the walkers? We're gonna find out next week. They may have to go into town. Will we finally find what happened to Glenn? We gotta hold on, we gotta wait, we gotta wait a week, and then we'll be right back here. Please press like if you enjoyed what I had to say. Feel free to subscribe. Comments in the section below, always appreciated. You can reach me at Darren Jakes. And I'm out of here. Y'all take it easy. Bye-bye.